every once in a while, a certain type of game crests the horizon. I'm not talking about games like Call of Duty, Resident Evil, or Hogwarts Legacy. All of those, great games, but you can see them coming from a mile away, and their arrival, it's not really a huge surprise. And that's fine. The games that I'm trying to talk about though, are games that they don't necessarily get a lot of marketing or hype around them. They come out, people try them, and the genuine reaction is, wow, these are really good. Outer Wilds and Description are both prime examples of these types of games, both of which are just amazing to play, unique, and just all around something you've never seen before. Dredge is another one of those types of games, a game that I genuinely had no idea what to expect. Coming right off of Resident Evil 4, I wanted that weird indie game palette cleanser. And honestly, I think Dredge really hit that spot. It nails all the notes of having a very interesting story, gameplay, and world building loop these types of games are known for. So much so that it pushed me to make a review so that more people hear about this game. This review won't contain any spoilers, so you're good to watch. Also, subscribe. So, this is the gameplay for Dredge. Now, you may be looking at this and thinking, is this guy really recommending a fishing game to me? Yes. Yes, I am. The reason though is not just because the fishing game is great, it's because everything else around the fishing game is also great. You start the game in a somewhat crap boat in terms of specs. It can't carry much, it goes pretty slow, and it can't take much damage. For the first couple of times you set sail, your main goal, just go out and fish. Enjoy the water, come back, sell the fish, go back, rinse and repeat. And honestly, it's pretty fun. You have to go out, fish in certain locations, find new species, fill out your encyclopedia, manage your inventory between fish and parts of your ship. It's all pretty fun and very relaxing. Let's talk about fishing. Fishing is enjoyable and the different types of fish have you play a different iteration of the timing based mini game they have going on here. With the amount of different fish they have in this game, you are always on your toes with a new style of mini game. It was cool. You get the opportunity to talk to NPCs as well. And for the first part of the game, the villagers that sell you your fish or speak to you on the island are all telling you, be careful, don't stay out too late. The night is very dangerous. And at first I listened to them. I avoided the night because I didn't really want to go out and test the waters yet. That is, until I got a side quest for a certain type of fish that was only out and about during the night time. So I venture into the night, looking for this elusive species of fish. And I notice there's something else behind this game. The game has a sanity meter, which at first I thought was a little weird. A sanity meter in my fishing game? What is going on here? Very quickly, I started to understand what kind of game this was turning into, and I loved every second of it. The way this game works is that you have to fish for all manner of creature during the day and nighttime. During the day, it's nice and pleasant. Like, look at this. Relaxing, right? Well, at night, the game starts to unravel and mess with your head. If you don't pay attention to your sanity meter and it gets to the red, you start to see things, you start to hear things. Rocks start to show up on paths that you've traveled before, paths that you know were clear, but for some reason, now rocky obstacles litter the path. When you look back, they're gone. A trick of the mind or something more sinister. You see boats on the horizon that seem to just vanish. Sometimes when the boats hear you or see your light, they barrel towards you, and you, in your excitement of having another friend on the high seas, welcome it only to be met with horrors beyond your comprehension. A monstrous creature is there instead, chasing you down and damaging your ship. The night becomes a place of terror. Gone are the times of safety and tranquility while the moon is in the sky. <clears throat> yeah, it's pretty good. I will say right now though, if you're someone who's really afraid of the deep sea and deep sea monsters, this game might be a bit much for you. Just letting you know. Now, the easy answer to avoid the deep dark creatures of the night is to just go out during the day, right? Ah, well, this is where the game designers really earn their chops. As you progress through the game, you're given a main quest. The main quest has you visit the four corners of the world, looking for some items and completing puzzles to gather said items. Now, because the world is so spread out, and because there's a lot to explore, you are 100% going to get caught out in the ocean at night. And sometimes at night, you'll see a lot of cool stuff out in the open sea. Treasures sparkle in the distance, unique fish light up the ocean floor, and sometimes side quests happen to be on shores of random islands you find. In addition to this, everything this game has you do takes time, movement, Fishing, looting, sailing, all that stuff takes time. It'll advance the day-night cycle whether you like it or not. So you gotta think twice about what you do. Do you stay out late and look for treasure, pushing the time of day into the dreaded night? Or do you sprint back to the nearest dock to rest and pass time until the day, missing out on valuable treasures and fish? Even then, if you choose not to sleep and just go back out into the ocean, the nighttime terrors can infiltrate the day too. Whatever you decide to do, Dredge is able to create a very cool gameplay loop. 
I personally really liked exploring and staying out at night to get better loot and resources. Seeing what the night had to offer was exciting as well as terrifying. Dredge strikes a great balance between the two. But if you spend too much time resting or exploring, the fish in your cargo hold rot and you lose value for them. So think before you decide to loot or explore. I also really like the inventory organization they had going on here. If you've played Resident Evil 4, it's very similar to the attache case system they had going on over there. By the way, check out my review for that. It's pretty good. The inventory management made for a fun minigame in and of itself, making me think creatively on how I organized as well as what I thought was important for my trip back to the merchant or upgrade station. Speaking of upgrades, nearly all of them feel really substantial and I was excited at any opportunity to turn my boat into a lean, mean fishing machine. <laughs> Anyways, I felt as though the upgrade system was also pretty well balanced. It takes a bit of resources to upgrade your ship, so the time between upgrades is nicely spread out and scales well for the end game. When you have better capabilities to make money, carry more, and overall explore the world a lot faster, it's going to take more resources to get a better ship. Just makes sense. Sometimes you can get upgrades from helping NPCs around the world. As you go about doing your routine, you will encounter numerous NPCs on random islands. Some want you to bring them something, help them escape, deliver something, etc. Looking for NPCs on nearly every island was very important and helps build out the experience a bit more. So be sure to do that. Dredge does a great job of making you want to explore. And in a game like this, that's vital in my opinion. I wanted to get more upgrades, see new types of fish, get cool treasure, or help random NPCs every chance I got. It's really cool to see this game get pretty well built out the more I played it. While the base layer, a fishing mini game, is really simple and fun, the layers that get added onto it help me want to come back to this game. Managing the time, sanity, overall hazards of the ocean floor made it a really in-depth experience. I do think the game suffers a little bit in terms of pacing. There were times where I was exploring a new region and the simple task was, okay, go explore, figure it out. And I was doing that, but they didn't really add anything else on top of that. So I got a little bored in some sections. And at the end of the day, it's not like a huge deal, but if you're the type of person that needs something new every hour of the game, that might be something to consider here. Besides that, gameplay was really fun. The world and story, however, oh man. Honestly, that might be my favorite part of the game. I am a sucker for really cool art styles. The game could be absolute dog water, but if the art style is really dope, I might check it out. Thankfully, Dredge is a perfect example of a game that has a unique and interesting art style that draws me in while also having a fun experience behind it. The beautiful painting style renditions of the various characters you interact with are really nice to look at and because there are not too many NPCs, most of them have their own unique portrait. The world is also pleasant to look at. The nice low poly 3D style they have going on here really lets you take in the scenic view as you explore during the day and emphasizes the darkness and unknown during the night. I think this game does a great job of diversifying and amplifying each time of day with their own unique style. During the day, you see beautiful waves, birds in the distance, beautiful islands, all that kind of stuff, and it's great. During the night, if your sanity meter gets low enough, you'll start seeing eyes, you'll start seeing giant creatures, you'll start hearing voices. All in all, it's a really cool and terrifying experience. And this carries over into the art for the fish as well. I know, a little weird for me to point this out, but it's really cool and I think it's something that should be appreciated. Nearly all the fish in this game have variants. A normal one which looks nice and pleasant, and an aberration. The aberrations are horrifying, but they're super interesting. And of course, they both look fantastic, both of them fitting within this unique art style that the game has got going on here. The writing of the game really complements the ominous world building they were going for as well. All the characters are aware of this dire world they're in. Some try to make the best of it, and some are just lost in their despair. For me, interacting with the characters of this game was a treat. A mystery is at the center of this game, and all the characters know it, giving you hints as well as warnings about the world in general. It felt nice, it felt built out, it felt like there was a history here. Like I said earlier, exploring is vital. Sometimes you find new NPCs as well as plot details throughout the world to help you understand the story a bit better. As you play through the game, you begin to care about these characters a bit more, and the storylines, some having side quests that change their outlook on life or give more information about their past. All this to say that the writing does a pretty good job focusing on the overarching mystery while supporting it with interesting characters and a creepy world. The story is neat. It kept me gripped for the entirety of my playthrough and when I finished it, there were still some things that were left unanswered, but with a story like this, that's very on brand and worked very well. With games like Outer Wilds, Inscription, and now Dredge, writing is an extremely important factor. Good writing can really carry a game, as it did here. 
It drove me to explore, brought me back to the game, and made me want to complete it. The game features two endings and does something really neat. At the jumping off point of the two endings, the game saves and lets you know, hey, we're approaching the ending, no saves are going to happen past this point. So after you get the first ending, just boot up your save file and bam, you can get the second one. The last point I want to make about the world in general is that the world is unique and each region has their own hazards when it comes to exploration. So exploring each one requires a different way of navigating them. Along with this, each region has their own types of wildlife. So in order to be able to catch the fish in each location, you have to have the right equipment, i.e. the upgrade system proper fishing rod, proper fishing reel, or a proper net. Depending on what you're looking for, you can mix and match your gear. It was a nice bit of micromanagement that builds out each region a bit more. Personally, I really like the coral region a lot. It was pretty at night and had some cool mechanics associated with it. Great story, interesting writing, and varied environments make Dredge a scary and relaxing experience that has me coming back for more. I think when games like Dredge are released, I can't help but feel a little bummed. Not because it isn't fun or anything, but because most people are just not going to play it. Whatever the case is, a lot of the time, games like these do not get the recognition they deserve. I think Dredge has earned a spot next to Inscription and Outer Wilds in the category of super unique and gripping game that no one expected to be as good as it was. A very niche category, I know, but I mean, what can you do? Dredge is a great game and I hope this review convinced you of that. It has a great story, fun gameplay, and a really cool world to explore. Some of the best games I have ever played are from these indie studios. They managed to nail the gameplay, story, and world building in a way that most other games are not able to do. I think Dredge is the next game that joins that list. That's not to say the game is perfect. I definitely think there are some things that it could improve on, like pacing and overall length. I do think the game was a bit short, and that might be because I wish there was more to it, but whatever the case is, I think the game could be made better with a bit more content. Still, I really think you should give this game a try. In a year where we have banger after banger coming out in terms of AAA titles, it's nice to slow down once in a while and really enjoy something that does things differently. Dredge provides that with no huge compromises. Who knows, it might inspire you to try out other indie games. You never know what you might find. If you're looking for a shorter game that's about 15 to 20 hours long, has a lot of exploration, a gripping story, as well as unique gameplay loop and awesome art style, this game might be for you. I'm giving Dredge an 8 out of 10, an experience that reels you in and lets you loose in a unique and interesting world. I also think this game is worth buying at full price. It's 30 bucks and provides an experience that you most likely have never had before. What'd you think of the review? Do you think you'll try out Dredge? Let me know below. I don't think this game beats Outer Wilds as my favorite game of all time, but it's something that I'll always have in the back of my mind. Like I was saying before, 2023 is looking like a crazy good year for games. Resident Evil 4, Star Wars Jedi Survivor, Street Fighter 6, Tekken 8, and Hogwarts Legacy are all coming out or have come out this year, and honestly, Game of the Year is looking more and more competitive. I honestly don't know if Dredge will be able to hold up against those games, but it'll still hold a place in my heart. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you haven't, and if you're interested in the other reviews I made, check out my Resident Evil 4 review. It's pretty good. Thank you.